What a delightful way to begin this morning. Thank you, Jay and Natalie. Suspended Between by Linda Barnes. Suspended between all that was and all that might be. We struggle to find this very moment, to live this very moment. Let us sit together for a moment and savor this moment. Let us relish this between time where past meets future. Let us harbor a faith that reminds us that right now, right here is enough. Good morning, everyone. I am Terry Donaldson, and I welcome you to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Huntington's virtual Sunday service. It's good to be together. Today is Stewardship Sunday, and our service may be somewhat different than our usual services. We will hear words from our board of trustees about where we've been this year and where we are going. We know you are all eager to hear about our minister search process, and we are excited to share that information with you. We will hear from our stewardship committee about this year's theme, Soul, Strengthening Our UU Lives. We'll get an update from our treasurer on our finances, and we will hear from some of our members why they love UUFH, are happy to be part of our community, and continue to pledge their support so that we may live our mission. As usual, we are streaming live on Zoom this morning. I'd like to extend a special welcome today to visitors who may be joining our service for the first time, as well as any newcomers who are returning. If you are new to our congregation and want to speak with someone to learn more about us, please contact us by email at office at uufh.org. We'll put this information in the chat during the service as well. As always, though our tech team behind the scenes is amazing, sometimes things happen, so please be patient with any technical mishaps. Know that whoever you are, whomever you love, and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And now we have a few brief announcements. You may have noticed signs around town saying, hate has no home in the town of Huntington, a campaign sponsored by the Huntington Anti-Bias Anti -bias Task Force, a nonpartisan group formed by the town of Huntington in conjunction with the Suffolk County Anti-Bias Task Force. It is made up of concerned clergy, community representatives, and lay persons who work together to address the issues of intolerance, prejudice, discrimination, and racism in any segment of our town. Among that group, you will find our very own Helen Boxwell. Some of our members have been attending rallies that call attention to this local campaign. One feature of this movement is the People's Public Proclamation Against Hate. To live up to our eighth principle, our UUFH Board of Trustees plans to sign this proclamation and publicly support this movement in our larger Huntington community. Please read the proclamation using the link on our website or in the flash and consider signing your name saying hate has no home in the town of Huntington. The more signatures, the more powerful this movement can become. Picture a world contest. The Long Island Area Council of UU Congregations, LIAC, invites all children and youth in UU congregations to express why learning about DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion in school matters to you. Be creative. All explorations of, this of the importance of DEI are welcome. And finally, 
Aging Gracefully series. The UU Congregation at Bridgehampton is offering an information full series of programs on Zoom entitled Aging Gracefully. Topics include making financial decisions, taking charge of your medical care, caring for aging parents, and nurturing relationships. They will be held on February 20th, March 20th, April 3rd, and May 22nd, all at 7 p.m. This is open to all Unitarian Universalists. For more information on these announcements, refer to our website, uufh.org, and The Flash, our weekly newsletter. And now I invite you to relax your body, quiet your mind as we breathe deeply together and settle into our time of worship. Please join me in saying our mission statement. The words will be on the screen. In religious community, we nurture our individual spirits through caring for one another and helping to heal the world. And now we'll hear our choir sing our affirmation, Common Ground. And now it is my great pleasure to invite Marisol and Charlotte Storm to light our chalice and share a reading. A flame to light our path by Deborah Burrell. Fire consumes and casts a bright light. May our chalice flame consume our regrets for the past, our fears about the future, and our worries about today. May it light for us a path of joy and peace. Thank you, Charlotte and Mari. I'd like to begin this morning with a brief look at where we've been as a congregation over these last six months or so. As you all know, we have faced many challenges this year. We have, had, we have faced difficult decisions of safeguarding our members from illness and from disconnection during the ongoing COVID pandemic. We have accepted the resignation of our settled minister and are facing our need for deep planning. And we have needed to fill the gaps left by our office administrator moving on. Believe me when I say we have been watching for pestilence, boils, and locusts. Despite these challenges, we have carried on the mission of the fellowship. I have been inspired by the commitment of our members as they have stepped up and shown their brightest colors. Our board has worked diligently as a team, engaging in deep and respectful discussion, coming to consensus on difficult and ever-changing decisions. Volunteers across the congregation have kept our Sunday services streaming, our finances managed, our office running, our building in good repair and healthy, our children and youth learning, our members cared for, our pumpkins selling and our garden growing food for our community and more. We have reached out beyond our world to help by writing postcards, encouraging citizens to use their voices in our elections. And as always, we have supported the Huntington Interfaith homeless initiative providing resources and food. 
Though we have not always been able to work side by side during the pandemic, we have been connected through the work of the fellowship. And now Ken will walk us through the process of our minister search. So we find ourselves in a liminal space in between our minister leaving and the calling of our next minister. You may be wondering what happens now that our minister has gone. When will we get started searching for a new minister? The board got started immediately once we were told of Jude's plans to leave us in December. In our discussions with the UUA, we learned that the cycle of applying for and receiving an interim minister begins in March of each year for an August start. We were out of the cycle. Our options at that point were to fill each Sunday with guest preachers, which we've been doing through January, or engage a contract minister during this in-between time. A contract minister can provide a consistent presence, preaching on Sundays, and provide some support to our community, our board, and our staff during this time. In the meantime, in March, we will apply for an intern minister to begin in August of this year. As many of you know, that this is a time for the congregation to do some soul searching, to look at where we are, reconsider our highest values, and reset our vision under the guidance of an intern minister. Many of you may recall the positive experience we had with Reverend Nancy Arnold. With our leadership and an intern minister, a search committee for a settled minister will be formed. This initiates an in-depth process of putting ourselves out there in the UU world, seeking a new settled minister who would love to serve our community this process can take a year or it can take two years. The length of it takes, the length that it takes will unfold during our process. I know it can seem a long way off before we feel settled, but this in-between time, this liminal space that we are in can be a rich and connecting time. May it be so. And now it's my pleasure to share some very exciting news. So, as I mentioned, that our board have initiated the process of seeking a contract minister. The UUA Transitions Office Director sent us the names of targeted ministers, someone who would be willing to work with us between mid-February and June of this year. We met with a candidate and discussed our current situation, decided to negotiate an agreement with her. And now I am happy to introduce Reverend Deborah Hafner, as our contract minister beginning February 16th and ending June 30th. She'll be preaching a service on February 13th. Reverend Deborah Hafner comes to us with much experience and passion. She has been a Unitarian Universalist for more than 18 years. She has served UU congregations in Westport, Connecticut, and most recently in Western Virginia and Santa Cruz County, California. She has been the executive director of two national not-for-profit organizations, and she has worked closely with the UUA and the UUMA on the development of materials on sexual safety in congregations, professional sexual misconduct prevention, and sexuality training for UU ministers and religious educators. Reverend Deborah is the author or co-author of seven books, including From Diapers to Dating, which has been translated into 12 languages. She holds a doctorate from the Pacific School of Religion, a Master's of Divinity from Union Theological Seminary, a Master's in Public Health from the Yale School of Medicine, a Bachelor's of Arts from Wesleyan University. Her work has been honored by such diverse organizations as the UU Women's Federation, Planned, Federation, Planned Parenthood Federation of America, the Union Theological Seminary, the Society for Scientific Study of Sexuality. Reverend Deborah has served as an early consultant on the development of the OWL program our whole lives. The guidelines of the committee of the UUMA and the Ministerial Fellowship Committee. Welcome, Deverin. Welcome, Reverend Deborah. Thank you. 
Penn. Thank you for that lovely introduction. And I'm so glad to meet all of you this morning. And I am really excited about serving you. I have long ago roots in Long Island. I actually lived in Massapequa as a small child. And then very deep roots to the New York metro area, having uh, grown up in Fairfield County and raised my own children there. Um, I also served the Unitarian Church in Westport, Connecticut for 13 years as its community minister. So if, if you go to my website or if you decide to follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn, you'll see that I describe myself as a sexologist minister. Um, I was ordained 19 years ago, it'll be 19 years in, in May, after a two decade career in sexuality education and the fight for sexual rights. Um, in addition to what Ken told you, I've also served churches in Hastings on Hudson uh, and Westport and most recently in Santa Cruz this fall. And in Santa Cruz, I learned that I actually love transition ministry. I love working and serving a congregation during a time of, as you've heard this morning, their liminal space. So I was very excited when Keith Cron, the head of our ministerial tra uh, transitions office called and told me about you. We're gonna be setting up several meet the minister sections uh, uh, during my first two weeks. So that's at the end of February. And then I've suggested to the board that we hold listening circles um, to hear how you are doing, how you're feeling, um, uh, what your hopes are going forward. I know it's been a very hard time in your congregation. Um, we're all suffering from the pandemic, but you have some particular instances that have been stressful for you all. And so I wanna really listen to you and I wanna find ways that we can help keep you connected and help keep the congregation strong as you begin your search for your new settled minister. I wanna take a moment just to thank the committee that chose me to be here and in particular, Terry and Ken and Gerard who had many Thursday night sessions with me uh, as we worked out um, our agreement. Um, you have great leaders and I'm really excited about working with them. Um, I can't wait to be with you. Um, and I am so glad you've chosen me to be with you during this time. Thank you. Well, <laughs> so I'd like to share a bit about who, how we will be together in these next few months. Uh, to have a crystal ball. The pandemic has been a game changer for all of us at the UUFH. From the very beginning, our members' health and safety has been a board priority. A reopening task force was formed in 2020, meeting regularly to examine the local data, seek guidance from the UUA and other health organizations, and make decisions about gathering in person or streaming on Sunday services to our members. I must take a moment and mention our debt of gratitude to our volunteers who have worked tirelessly to present the multi-platform Sunday services each week for those in person when we are in person, and those tuning in via Zoom or Facebook. It has allowed us to bring the service to so many people in a way that for each of us is comfortable and a way of enjoying it. And we have reconnected with members who've moved away. And we have found some interesting guests tuning into Facebook. This is now our new normal. Our approach to keeping our members safe when we are meeting in person has been to put layers in place to mitigate or reduce the spread of the virus. Steps that we have taken include asking our members who are able to be vaccinated if they plan to attend in person. We have upgraded our HVAC system with improved air filtration, as well as fans to increase the air circulation. We've purchased air purifiers for our RE classrooms. And we have set guidelines for people to be masked and observe physical distancing when indoors. We had in-person services throughout the fall and we averaged 25 to 30 attendees in our main hall. We had increased numbers of our RE children and youth coming to class. Our RE participants and their teachers braved the weather with outdoor classes all the way through November. Unfortunately, the soaring numbers of COVID transmissions and hospitalizations 
in our area after the holidays in December made it necessary for us to return to fully virtual services. It is our hope and plan to reopen the fellowship for those who wish to worship in person to begin again as the COVID data reflects safer numbers. To wrap up, 2022 has much, holds much for us to be excited about and engaged at the UUFH. Our new contract minister will be joining us soon and we will begin our process of searching for a new minister. We will put our minds and hearts towards revisioning and rebuilding our community. We are entering our 75th anniversary year, 60 of those years in the castle giving us the wonderful opportunity to recommit ourselves to the values and vision of those upon whose shoulders we now stand. Thank you for your part in sustaining our UUFH community all of these many years. I invite us all to join the choir in singing Spirit of Life. Following the song, we'll enter into a time of silence and then prayer. As you participate at home, remember, it's not about the perfection of silence, but the intention. Join me in singing now. In Between by Kate R. Walker. In between, liminal, that space where we wait, between moments, events, results, action, no action. To stand on the threshold, waiting for something to end, and something new to arrive, a pause in the rumble of time. Awareness claims us, alert, a shadow of something different. In between invitation and acceptance, in between symptom and diagnosis, in between send and receipt of inquiry and question in between love given and love received. Liminality, a letting go, entering into confusion, ambiguity, and disorientation. A ritual begun, pause, look back at what once was, look forward, into what becomes. Identity sheds a layer, reaches into something uncomfortable to wear. 
in between lighting of the match and kindling of the oil, in between choosing of text and the reading of words, in between voices and notes carried through the air into ears to hear, in between creation thrusts ever forward. Social hierarchies may disassemble and structures may fall. Communities may revolt or tempt trust. Tradition may falter or creativity crashes forward. Leaders may step down or take charge. The people may choose or refuse. In between, storm predicted, the horizon beacons. In between, theology of process reminds us to step back. In between, where minutia and galaxies intermingle with microbes and mysteries. In between, liminal, that space where we wait, look, listen, feel, breathe. At this time in our service, we invite you to lift up the names of those people who are in our hearts right now, so that we may light a virtual candle on their behalf to keep them in our thoughts and prayers. Please type the names in our chat box and I will read them aloud. Jan, Deb, Sam, Genevieve, Mark and Dottie, Laura, Don Ellis, Stephen. All those struggling with and healing during this time of COVID. Roz. Elliot, <laughs> we hold these names and all those written silently on the tablets of our hearts in our thoughts and prayers. Our split plate for the month of January is Gender Equality New York. Gender Equality New York Inc., better known as Jenny, is a nonprofit whose mission is to advocate for transgender, non binary, and intersex New Yorkers. Jenny is committed to gaining equal rights and ending discrimination to achieve economic, educational, racial, and social equality for our communities. These goals are met by engaging in education and outreach to increase the general public's understanding of the gender expansive community and to decrease incidents of discrimination and violence. Jenny seeks to influence the public's social attitudes, gain allies, and establish our community's presence across New York State. Further, Jenny works to protect gender expansive people and their rights by advocating with poorly informed decision makers in state and local governments and agencies that may not be prepared to safeguard and nourish this misunderstood and persecuted community. Finally, Jenny continues to connect and empower this small community by supporting local regional groups and providing virtual and in-person community events. You can send a check to the office or donate through our website as seen on your screen you can also donate through the Vanco mobile app, which can be found in on the App Store or in Google Play. It is now my pleasure to introduce our newest members to our community. They joined us before the pandemic and are our last family to sign the book. 
please enjoy the Ottens. Graham, Laura, Millie, and Hi, Mick. we're uh, Graham and Laura Otten. Uh, we joined UUFH in uh, February of last year. Um, we had really been thinking about it for a while and held off um, once the pandemic started. But as things wore on, we figured uh, better to join virtually than to not join at all. And uh, since we've joined, it's just been um, a really wonderful experience for our whole family, being part of a, a community that shares our values and uh, being able to gather together each week um, for, for fellowship. Mm -hmm. I really love how it's a break in the week. Um, it provides us a time for quiet and stillness. We have two young kids and it's go, go, go in our house. And it's a nice time for him and I to just sit down and have that stillness together um, to collect ourselves. And the kids love it too. And it's been really fun to see them grow and learn there and meet other people and other families as well. Yeah, we've been so happy to meet so many uh, members of the fellowship. And um, as, as hopefully we continue on this uh, road to moving out of the pandemic, we look forward to meeting uh, everyone else as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. I like fellowship. What do you like about fellowship? About um, when I learn new, when the others are on the step and they can talk. Okay. And that's my end. Millie, and what the do you... other one? Talks. Millie, what I you... like about our E is. The crafts we do, and we learn about the earth and all kinds of things. I also liked the pageant. I was the angel in it. And I was the and He was party. the sheep. I like Ari so much. I love it. I love Ari. Why do you love Ari? Because there's so many things to do and nice friends to play with. I love art I love so Barbie. much. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Gerard Neighbor, and I thank you for the opportunity to serve as your treasurer and to provide you with an update. Financially, we're in a strong position. This year, we are keeping in line with our budget. We continue to manage our expenses prudently, and our endowment has continued to grow. For context, pledges cover approximately 65% of our operational expenses each year. So the fellowship depends on everybody's support and commitment to continue growing and flourishing. The fellowship's livelihood literally depends on us, and the pledging process allows us to plan appropriately for the upcoming year. Looking forward, we'll be searching for a new transitional minister and settled minister. Both of these exercises will require additional resources above and beyond our typical budgeting. And we should keep in mind as a community that our financial health will help us attract the best ministerial candidates. Our ability to pay a full-time minister a living wage on Long Island should not be discounted or trivialized. So with that, I say thank you, and I remind you to take advantage of the opportunities to donate appreciated stock, use your IRA distributions, and to include the UUFH in your estate planning. I'm available to help you with any questions you may have. And with that, we'll now hear from our choir. Thank you. 
Good morning. I'm Jan Brenner on the Stewardship Committee, and it's good to be in the warm company of friends on this cold winter day. Today, on Stewardship Sunday, we gather together to celebrate the past, dream of the future, and pledge our continued support in 2022 to our beloved congregation, the UUFH. You have already heard speakers talk about the history of the fellowship, its humble beginnings, and some of the achievements that have been made over the past year. With excellent leadership from the Board of Trustees and the generous volunteer services provided by the many committees in the fellowship, we are not only surviving, but thriving, thanks to all of us. We, the UUFH members and friends, are the soul of our congregation. What do I mean by soul? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary offers several definitions of soul as both a noun and an adjective. Noun definitions included the spiritual part of a person believed to give life to the body and often believed to live on forever. Another one, a person's deeply felt moral and emotional nature and the ability of a person to feel kindness and sympathy for others and to appreciate nature, beauty, art, etc. Soul food, soul music, soul mates, and soul satisfying were examples given of soul used as an adjective. The concept of soul has been and will continue to be a popular focus of thinkers, writers, philosophers, and human beings around the world and throughout history. Walt Whitman wrote, whatever satisfies the soul is truth. And Virginia Woolf stated, books are the mirrors of our soul. Ferdinand Falk, a French general in World War I, believed that the most powerful weapon on earth is the human soul on fire. Lana Del Rey, born Elizabeth Woolridge Grant in upstate New York, is a contemporary singer songwriter and poet who has collaborated on movie soundtracks as well as recording her own music. She shares that my mother told me I had a chameleon soul, no moral compass pointing due north, no fixed personality, just an inner indecisiveness that was as wide and wavering as the ocean. Whatever your personal concept of soul might be, fixed or constantly changing, UUFH offers many means to explore, share, develop, and celebrate it. One or more of these definitions and quotes may resonate with some essential and emotional elements in each one of us. We hope that our con congregational life will bring us together to share our beliefs, both common and different, spark our curiosity and creativity, inspire friendship, and ignite us to act in tune with our souls, each other, and the community to make our world a better place. Soul, in the context of this year's steward, stewardship pledge drive, means to strengthen our UU lives. How we achieve our goals depends to a large extent on us. As members and friends of the congregation, your contributions in the form of time, talent, volunteer services, and financial pledges will determine how our fellowship goals are set and met. UUFH has a long history of shared leadership and active member participation in Sunday service programming. Religious education, decision-making, and almost all aspects of fellowship life and business. This year, we have voted to add an eighth principle, affirming to journey towards spiritual wholeness by working to build a diverse, beloved community to dismantle racism and other oppressions in ourselves and our institutions. These are not easy tasks and goals to accomplish. They require the commitment of our physical, financial, and spiritual resources. We will need time and resources to strengthen the programs 
still up and run, running during COVID and to develop new ones to meet our changing circumstances. It has been a joy for the UUFH congregation to follow the growth of our youngest members from dedication to FOS camp, from OWLs to coming of age, and eventually to celebrate their graduation and bridging to the world at large. Our RE classes for both children and adults are still supporting members during the pandemic with a combination of in-person and online programs. The Touchstone Journey and book club groups allow members to stay in touch and keep their individual and collective sparks alive. Our social justice and beyond our walls programs still maintain their network contacts with outside agencies and community leaders and call us to act in response to community events. UUFH helped start the Huntington Interfaith Homeless Initiative in combination with the Family Service League many years ago. Our contributions of volunteers, food, and financial support enabled the program to shelter, feed, and save lives during the cold winter months. Care Share and pastoral care volunteers have been very active this past year, visiting, providing meals, and transportation to members in need. They have also supported Reverend Jude, our minister, as he helped us to face the loss of many very, very dear members of our congregation. The hardy, stable roots of our past, winged flight of our collective imagination, and the fruits of our hard work have served us well. We are responding positively and adapting well to the unique challenges of the present pandemic and our congregation with new technologies, skilled, caring personnel, and creative ways to communicate, connect, and support one another. As we begin this new year, 2022, we ask all of us, the soul of our congregation, to join together to strengthen our UU lives by making a financial pledge to support our congregation by February 15th. Our, generation, our generous, timely support will enable our board and finance committee to create a sound budget and envision a bright future for all, all of us at UU of FH. I leave you with two of my favorite quotes about soul. The first is from Albert Schweitzer. At times, our light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame within us. The last is from a poet, Charles Bukowski, whom I learned about during a UUFH services auction event. The free soul is rare, but you know it when you see it, basically because you feel good, very good, when you are near or with them. This is how I feel when I am at UUFH. Please feel good about you and whatever you do. Regarding how to pledge, most of you should have received your individual pledge forms via email. If not, forms are available online or can be mailed to you. You can make your pledge by emailing the completed form to stewardship at uufh.org or by printing the form and returning it via the US Postal Service. Pledges can also be made online through the UUFH website at uufh.org. The blue Pledge Sunday button on the home page and the brown tab for donations and pledges will both bring you to a page with detailed directions on how to access and submit your pledge forms. Pledges provide the single largest source of financial support for our congregation. They are the foundation for the UUFH budget each year and must be submitted by February 15th in order for the Board of Trustees to craft a balanced budget for the next fiscal year. Please contact Sue McGovern at sumagovern45 at gmail.com 
with any questions or concerns. Thank you in advance for your continued commitment to the UUFH and for making your generous pledges by the deadline of February 15, 2022. Now, I am delighted to welcome Elijah Dinsman, one of our talented RE students who will share some of his thoughts about UUFH. Hi, my name is Elijah and I have been going to UUFH for four years. I really like going to RE and seeing my friends. I also like being in the Christmas pageant each year. I've played Joseph a lot. My family also volunteers for Hi Hi a lot. This is because my mom helps run it. I like making food for people who need it and giving to people who don't have as much as we do. My family is really happy they found the UFH. We love the friends we have made and that we feel like we belong. Thank you, Elijah, for being brave enough to express your enjoyment of UUFH. We're delighted to have you. Thank you to all for this lovely service, especially our stewardship committee. Thank you for being here today and for being part of our beloved community. We welcome you into active participation as we move through this time of change. As we extinguish the chalice, I'll leave you with these words by Cindy Terlazzo. With love as my guide, amidst the swirl of life's challenges, fears, and even moments of crisis, we make time to gaze at the night sky, to see the vastness there, and to remember that this moment in time is but a flicker, not an inconsequential flicker, for what we do and think now does matter. Our work though, is to let the debris of this world pass by while I anchor myself to what we know is true, love, kindness, compassion, and caring for this precious life, this precious planet, and all that call this place home. This is my North Star. With love as my guide, how can I possibly go wrong?
you, choir, for that inspiration as we wrap up today. Thank you for your presence in today's worship. If you would like to remain on, we will be creating small groups led by our board members to answer any questions about the information presented today. If you're on your way, please enjoy the rest of